So if I can actually list up in summary that the Hisocat leads smaller engines to reach even higher speeds. Uh, that in, in a case brings with it that you have lower consumption. For the same range of a craft, you need to store less fuel in about to reach the end of it. Then coming to very up-to-date problems with carbon footprint. Smaller engines burn less fuel, ex uh, the exhaust has less carbon. That seems to be a future trend together with lower fuel consumption by itself is very important because the price of fuel goes up. When you buy your ship, you buy smaller engines, cost less money. You consume over the next 20 years only half the fuel. This makes enormous sums. We did work such things on the big ferries in Hong Kong. In eight months, they had savings by the fuel consumption on these gas turbine driven ferries. The whole fuel system costs out by eight months. And there we are stuck. So the, the next step is what does a Heisocat bring uh, in the operational side? You know, on the operational side, it runs smoother. It can jump waves and hits the next wave much smoother. So it is much more sea friendly. People, and especially wives and so on, on these uh, boats, at the, on these fast boats, are very sensitive against these enormous accelerations, which are reduced to maybe 10% on the Heiser Cats. So you will also see more uh, uh, women, wives, and girlfriends on these boats in future. And I promise you that will happen, you know. We, I have the experience. I mean, I have some photos on the website where two girls driving a Isocat, and it's a long time ago, you know, the hair standing flat up in the back, indicating the speed, and they are laughing and enjoying it. And just put them on a monohull and do the same. They will sit in the corner and hang on and something, you know, and just think hopefully it's soon over, you know. So that is the sea keeping. The sea keeping has, brings more advantages in, and that applies mainly to a bigger, but it makes a lower wake. Look on a Heisocat on these videos, what it leaves behind. Flat sea, a little bit white water, nearly no wave. And big ferries, it's a very, very big problem. We have worked a lot on it, running fast. And in Europe and America, they make a wave which does not look very high when you see the boat passing because you see it all in comparison to size. But that wave can run 100 kilometers and drown children on the beach. And that happened a few times in some American areas where uh, between islands there is a sea passage, it's not very wide. These fast ferries run high speed there. And fishermen, they sit on, always on reefs. There's a fish, there's shallow water. A wave coming in shallow water grows up to very steep waves. These sh ships are drowned by the waves. And nobody knows where it comes from but later they traced it. So these passages are getting now speed restrictions. And that is now a very uh, controversial decision to make speed restriction, but the Heisocat makes a lower wave at high speed. That has the highest efficiency, like a Jumbo jet aircraft, at high speed when it runs level and fast. When it starts going up in the air, it has a high angle to make these lift forces with low velocities. It already burns half of the fuel. When it is flat, the Heisocat does the same. So when rather uh, to save fuel, you go faster. Uh, with the Heisocat, with a monohull, you must go much slower. With uh, sea keeping, it's very similar. So tests were done on 45 meter boats of the wake of these ships there was less than half on, uh, on the, for example, the Halter e cat which was left behind. And it fell in law restrictions on wave creation easily, where the other boats all had to use speed reductions. So the advantages are so much, it is a big list, and uh, it is sounding like an utopic announcement to get a job, you know, when you say that. But this is all based on facts. And that is what we must transmit.